Hi again. Uh, we started this series on air marshal books with uh, the book on the history of the air marshals uh, by Clay Biles. And uh, today we're going to look at his other book, which basically covers his uh, career in uh, the FAM, in the Federal Air Marshal. So uh, Mr. Biles had been a SEAL and um, he'd gone into um, contract work and he'd been part of the um, Karzai detail when President Karzai in Afghanistan was protected by uh, a commercial team. And um, he had a friend already going through uh, training in the Air Marshals, a chap called Al, and um, uh, Mr. Biles signed up. Now, the um, recruitment process and the vetting process for federal employment, um, let alone uh, law enforcement, is uh, a very long and complicated process, and it's uh, highly inefficient, to be honest. But uh, he eventually goes through all the hoops and is um, signed up by the San Francisco field office. He turns up in San Francisco and they do an orientation phase there first and he meets the other guys who've been recruited. Um, one of the things they start doing is uh, fitness training with um, runs along the beach. And uh, something that occurred to me during this was one of the chaps was a, a big unit who'd been a football player and uh, he, he was fit and strong, but he had trouble running just because of his size and weight. And he always struggled on the long runs. But it, it occurred to me that um, what kind of fitness do you actually need on an aircraft? You know, who would you prefer um, within the close confines of an aircraft to engage uh, a bad guy? Would you have a big football player type guy with enormous strength or somebody who can sprint um, and, and run a marathon. Um, so I, I think running is used as a, a fitness measurement in, in, in just too strict a, a way, I think. And a lot of it's, it's a, to me, it's a lazy measurement. Okay, so from there, he goes to Atlantic City for another short phase before going through through the phase at Artesia in New Mexico. And um, to me, to my mind, that's the phase they can do away with. They basically learn um, federal law enforcement, constitutional law, um, and a lot of it really applies in a more general law enforcement sense rather than the specifics uh, of the counter-terrorist role of an aircraft. And the, if you go back to the other books I've talked about, um, the Federal Air Marshal role was counter-terrorist. After 9-11, for some reason, they started to think of it more of a law enforcement role. Um, but if you think about the job, it's, it's strictly counter-terrorist. Anyway, so um, it's at uh, Artesia that he first uh, really is introduced to some of the absol absolute... Um, direct of managers who infest um, federal law enforcement. Because um, so, when they turn up to be picked up at the airports after uh, delayed flights um, and, and they want something to eat, they hadn't eaten for several hours, and the managers said, no, um, no one's stopping, and if anyone stops, they'll be punished, etc., 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 and uh, for no reason at all, just to really to be awkward. Anyway, so... Artesia finishes and they all go back to Atlantic City, which is the main uh, training base where, where the real task relevant training takes place. Firearms, um, uh, what they call defensive tactics. Uh, and Mr. Biles does raise a point about that. He says, because um, the instructor, um, who's an ex-US Marine instructor, uh, Cardo Erso, who is very well known in the community, is really top-notch guy. And he, he says, you know, I wonder what he thinks of it being taught as defensive. It's nothing defensive about it. It's aggression-based, or should be. But again, the labelling the things for more law enforcement role. Um, aircraft tactics, um, scenarios, and he describes a couple of scenarios. One, which one of the guys who's a weak link in the class uh, 
fails abysmally, and another in which he and his um, what, what one of his his mates in the class uh, perform well in the scenario and handle it. And the, the scenario is um, really good, really good type of training. Um, and then they have to do some tests. <clears throat> And I actually read out one of the tests to some of the guys who, who train with us here. And uh, it, it started with uh, intense fizz, uh, push-ups and things like that, chins. Then they have to, to run to another room, um, strike the bags for a certain amount of time, and then they face a padded assailant. And the, the chaps I read it to said, yeah, it's exactly what we do at the, you know, the international and so on. So, you know, it, it just shows that there's a lot of commonality of thought um, in arriving at how to train people for particular tasks. And, um, you know, in my opinion, that's really good training. So um, one of the things that um, he encountered there was the mindset of the instructors who wanted a uniform appearance. His hair was a little bit long and he, he, he got um, criticised for that. You know, this is a professional agency and so on. But you're trying to blend in in an environment of, of people who are traveling. You don't want to all look the same. Short hair, military slash law enforcement appearance, all wearing the same type of um, clothing and so on. Um, okay, so then uh, he goes back to San Francisco, to the field office there, and he, he's on the, um, the rotor for flight duties. And the first um, flight he takes, international flight, to London. So he meets up the rest of the team. They go through the boarding procedures. Uh, while they're in the first class lounge, um, a, a lady passenger comes up to him and points out the air marshals, says, you know, I see these guys all the time and she knows what to look for and so on. And so that, you know, was a bit of a wake up to him. And um, so he describes the flight to London, going through British customs procedures, handing in the weapons and so on, um, some time on the ground in London and the return flight. So um, nothing happens, but, you know, the um, just the difficulty of um, remaining alert during transatlantic flights. And from then on, he's on the flight um, uh, routine. He's flying all over the world. Uh, far east and so on lots of adventures in different places uh, mainly on the ground and um, not much in the way of incidents except um, with, with Al his mate they, they team up and they're on a flight to Frankfurt and the team leader was a bit of um, a Superman character who wanted to kind of um, be everywhere at once there's an incident with a drunken passenger who's um, uh, assaulting people on, on, on the flight and the flight attendants asked the, the marshals to intervene. Um, now, it's well known this can be a distraction and come on and so on, you know, there's, that's in the back of their minds. And uh, while, while him and Allah are working out to handle it, the um, team leader comes down and sort of takes over and makes a mess of it and it, it all goes wrong. Um, so that was kind of a a little bit of a uh, an incident. The other thing he talks about is the um, Secret Service factor. After 9-11, uh, when the uh, Air Marshal Service went to the newly created um, Department of Homeland Security and within TSA, the management um, was uh, ex-Secret Service guys, and they uh, staffed it with their cronies. Now, none of these guys were air marshals. None of them had a, a clue about the actual job. And uh, one of the first things they did, and partly this was due to the uh, massive expansion of the service, trying to get numbers through, was they dropped some of the shooting tests. And the famous shooting test, the TPC, Tactical Pistol Course, that had been created um, in the pre by the pre-9-11 air marshals, who were a very elite and highly trained uh, carder, um, they dropped it. And one reason was they couldn't get guys through it. And the second reason was the managers um, who needed to pass it to carry firearms couldn't. So they dropped it. So they lowered the standards. Um, and the 
impression is that the air marshals have these very high standards, but the reality is they only have to qualify through the the old PPC, which is a revolver-based course, plus um, the basic federal fitness course um, on a quarterly basis. And and quite often, um, it, it's just a, a tick, in, tick in the box. Having said that, a lot of the guys are heavily into the fitness and heavily into the shooting and are really, really uh, good at it and invest a lot of time and effort into it. But um, as regards what's actually required by the agency, um, it, it's just that. It's, it's not much at all. So very, very little incentive to actually do the job, job any better. Um, there was a, a course of fire called the Triple Nickel, which was created by an ex-Delta Force uh, Chief Firearms Instructor who left just as uh, Clay Bars joined. Uh, and this, this was unofficial, but it was... Um, still quite highly regarded it's it's a fast difficult shoot uh my only um really reservation about it uh and, and some similar shoots like that it has um a round count in it that you know when you're going to have to perform a magazine change and in my opinion magazine changes should be spontaneous and they, sh they should be induced by putting a dummy round in at random we always have a thing where you mate loads, you, uh, charges your magazines. So when you get a stoppage, it's at random and you have to sort it out. So it's a surprise. Um, and then you just build the, the time allowance into that. So although it's a very, fa very fast um, shooting course, um, that one little thing doesn't make it uh, as effective as it could be. So... Uh, um, Clay Biles and his, his mate Al both train up and train up and train up and then go and take this uh, shooting test, the triple nickel and both pass. So um, that's quite a feather in their caps. And just as a final point, he's got a lot of gripes. Um, he, he leaves the service after um, putting in an official complaint about one of the managers and it was investigated by the Office of Professional Responsibility. And, um, but... It, they leaked it and he became sort of uh, persona non grata and he, he was kind of forced out um, uh, over another incident involving one of his mates who was in a traffic accident. So he's got a lot of gripes. He, he's got moans about the performance standards of certain of the marshals and so on. And there's always two sides to it. But the foreword to the book is written by the guy who created the triple nickel, Kelly Venden, the ex-Delta guy, who was the chief firearms instructor, and he left the firearms because of the same type of things. So he, he kind of um, really confirms a lot of what Mr. Bars has said. Um, great book. It, it, it's um, a unique look at the uh, air marshal service since 9-11. It's very, very detailed and um, uh, a very thorough examination and it's quite eye-opening as well.